So this is the agenda. Let's go ahead and get started with where we are in the P2P process. So we went over requisitions last week, orders earlier this week, and finally we are going over the final part in the P2P process, which is receiving. So returns are a form of receipts, which is why they kind of bunch it all together under the receiving umbrella. So we will talk about both of those today. Let's first talk about some receiving in the new platform, some key points around it that might be different than what you all were used to seeing in the previous platform. So receipts are started from the purchase order by clicking on the create receipt button. We'll take a look at this in the demo. And while there are other ways to do it, this is the cleanest, most straightforward and easiest way for the end user. So that is why we recommend that they start from the purchase order. It um, makes the most sense for them and it's the easiest for them. And also it makes it easy for you all as helping them um, to do it this way. So also when creating a receipt in the new platform, this is different from the previous platform, Eva defaults to reflect that all line items have been received in full. So this is something that some folks are having to get used to because they're used to going in and having to, I think it was um, the accept all button in the previous platform and there's not a button like that. Now, because the system defaults to you wanting to receive in full. So if they want to receive in full, great, it's already set up for them, but we will talk about how um, people can partially receive um, especially when it's a big order, we'll talk about some troubleshooting steps to take with the end user um, with regards to partial receiving. Also I want to talk about the receiving method. You may or may not have heard this um, since we went live, but the receiving method, the quantity or amount that they want to receive on is decided on the line item of the first receipt. And once the end user selects that method, they are locked in and without some really complicated in um, in-depth steps, which we will go over briefly, they're not able to change that. So it is something that CGI is working on being fixed. And in the meantime, we are instructing end users to play, pay really close attention to that receiving method on that first receipt, because if they pick the wrong one, they will be locked in. Or if they keep the default, option rather than changing it, they will be locked in for all subsequent receipts or returns. So again, something we are working on, but in the meantime, we are asking them to be really careful when they're doing the receiving. Okay, the receipt lines um, on the actual receipt are not numbered like they are on the purchase order lines. Um, and then if they have multiple lines, they might appear out of order. So again, this is another thing that CGI is working to fix. So in the meantime, we're instructing the end user to also pay close attention to which line items they're receiving on. I encourage them to have, a, have the purchase order up on a different screen at the same time. Um, Mia yeah, wants you to know that she's not able to get in time. Awesome. Thank you, Joanne. Appreciate that. Um, so, you are. so we, um, again, it's something we're working on fixing on, but they just, they really need to pay attention. And I would recommend that they have the PO up on a different screen and they're comparing the description of the line items. That's really the, um, I don't want to say easiest because it's not easy, but it's the most accurate way for them to make sure that they are receiving on the correct line item. But again, that is something that CGI is aware of and they are working on. Draft receipts have been a big pain point. We finally have the ability to delete draft receipts. However, they do, they are not removed from the list of receipts attached to a PO and we'll take a look at that during the demo. Um, but the good thing or big thing, not good thing, big thing to know about draft receipts, if someone has them as an end user and they have a total attached to them, that does affect the total received figure. So even though it's in draft, it's still going to affect that total received amount or quantity. 
This is something that's been coming up a lot recently. Suppliers can create advanced shipping notices. And when they do that, it starts the shell for the end user, the shell of the receipt. So we had originally done this so that it would save the end users um, a step when they are doing the receiving process, but it's not working like we expected. So what's happening is when the supplier creates that advanced shipping notice, they start the workflow for the receipt. And then the end user can't do anything to that receipt because it has to be the person that started the workflow on the receipt has to finish it. So it's it's causing some issues. It's something, again, that CGI is aware of and they are working to correct. In the meantime, we are letting end users know that because they now have the ability to um, delete a receipt or they're calling it discard a receipt, they can do that. And then they, as the end user, can start the receipt so that they can finish it and submit it. They also have the ability if for whatever reason they don't want to um, discard the receipt, they can delete the line items on the receipt so it doesn't affect the total received. But I think the best solution is that first one, which is to discard the receipt. And then we're also letting suppliers know that at this time until we get this fixed, not to do any advanced shipping notices. It is an optional step for the supplier. So, Hopefully, um, they don't mind not doing that. Okay, let's go into our receipts demo. I will stop sharing this and I will start sharing my other screen. Move this over here. Okay, so we're going to do the receipts we're receiving demo first, um, and we'll talk about some things. Um, I have notes over here about what I need to remember to tell you. So if you see me looking over here, I'm not being rude and I'm not distracted, I promise. It's just that my notes are on the side of my monitor so that I go over um, everything that I need to go over with you and that I don't forget something. So first we're gonna just talk about receiving an order and how that receipt is created so that you can help the end users when they have questions about that. So I have gone to browse orders because remember, like I said, the best way for our end users to create a receipt is to start it from the order. There are other ways they can do it. The cleanest, easiest, and most efficient way is to start it from the purchase order. So I'm gonna scroll down and let do. I knew I had one before that I really wanted to use, but that's okay. I can do any of these. Let's go ahead and we'll just use this one. Perfect. Test for PO print. So the end user will navigate to the order that they want to receive. And they'll see the Create Receipt button, which is next to the Change Order button, um, which should look familiar to you because that's what we went over during our order session earlier this week. So they would just click on Create Receipt. And this brings up the single receipt screen with some header information that's already filled out for them, but they can change any of it if they need to. And then you also have a little um, order box over here that lets you know what the total was that was ordered. We get a lot of end users saying, okay, um, I clicked the create receipt button and now I don't know what to do because it's not giving me anything to do except maybe add a comment or an attachment. So if you, I think I said it during the requisition training that this is a save to see other options system. Again, fair term, not a technical term, so don't use it with technical folks, but feel free to steal it when you're helping end users and say, that um, it's your term, I'm, I'm happy to let you have it. It's something that has helped me as I um, have beginning to and maybe partway medium confidence in the new platform. But when they um, don't have any action to take anywhere, they wanna hit that save button. And that's going to open a lot of other things on the single receipt screen, including the line item, which is where they're going to want to do the receiving. So remember what I said that the um, receipts default to the end user wanting to fully receive no matter how many line items it has. 
So if you scroll up here, you can see there's the order box that we just talked about and the total is 400. And then because it default to receiving 400, you'll see the 400 there. So if they wanted to partially receive, they would need to go in and click the little pencil icon that's next to the line item on the receipt, similar to the line item that's on the requisition in the PO. And then here they can change the quantity to something that is less than the total that it defaulted to. So when we went over the key points for requisitions just a few moments ago, we talked about the fact that once you choose the method of receiving, that the buyer or the receiver, I should say, is locked in for all subsequent receipts. And they can't really change that without some in-depth steps, which we'll talk about towards the end of today's session. So when they are wondering how they change it from quantity to amount, it's actually this little box that's right next to the quantity to receive box. And if they wanted to receive by amount, they would just select USD and you can see that it changes to the total of the purchase rather than the total quantity of the purchase. So again, if they wanted to receive by amount and they forget to change it here and they save this and submit it, they are locked into receiving by quantity for all subsequent receipts or returns. It's something they're working to fix, but for right now, it is imperative that they pay close attention to the method of receiving on the line item of the first receipt. So we will go ahead and click save here. Actually, let's do a partial receiving. I'll change it to three. And we'll click save and save and close. And then you can see that the system um, generates that number with the quantity that we're receiving times the unit price for the total. And you can see that it's changed up here as well from 400 to 240. Before the end user submits the receipt, they do have the ability to add comments and attachments. You all probably remember that in the previous platform, I know they could add attachments after the fact. I'm not sure if they could add comments, but they were used to being able to add attachments after they've submitted the receipt. That is no longer the case. So after they have pressed submit, there is no change that can be made to this particular receipt. They can create a return from it, but they are not able to change anything or add anything once they click that submit button. So another thing for the end user to know, especially because a lot of the times they get invoices after they've already done the receiving. And in that case, I would most of the time tell them that they could create a return and then create another receipt with the attachment. Unfortunately, it is not something um, that they're able to do right now but a possible enhancement for the future. So we will go ahead and click submit so you can see what that looks like. UAT is being especially slow for me today, which I appreciate. So you might um, see this box pop up or the end user might see this box pop up. You can just tell them to ignore it. It is something that, um, is a function or capability in the new platform, but it's not something that we have trained to um, or really made available to everyone. So you can just let end users know if they call or email about this, but all they need to do is close it. It's not something they need to worry about filling out. And then you can see that the receipt has been created as a receipt number, it's an REC number. And another question that we get a lot when someone wants to know what's been received on a PO, they want to know the amount that's been received so far. And let's say that they're not in the previous or last receipt, so they can't see this box because they haven't navigated there yet. The best place for them to go when the fastest place is to go to browse orders. And I'm actually going to grab this order number so I can show you. Is to go to procurement and browse orders. They can search for the order number that they're looking for. And here it is, it's the first one that's listed. And here they'll see an ordered column and a received column. So the ordered is the total amount on the purchase order and then the received column shows them what has been received so far. 
So when I talk about draft receipts affecting the total, this is the total that I mean is the total received. So even though those draft receipts haven't been submitted, it still affects this figure. The other question we get a lot is I don't know what the receipt numbers are that are attached to my purchase order. What's the easiest way to find that? So the easiest way for the end user to find that information is to click on the purchase order. And in this left navigation, there are three options here. So we're currently on the purchase order page or tab, I should say, then the workflow, and then this little receipts tab with the little truck. So if it's collapsed, you'll just see the truck. If it's expanded, you'll see that it's called receipts. And this is the page where all the receipts, no matter what the status is, draft, approved, or deleted, everything is listed here. And you can see when they've been, um, when it was completed or what the delivery date was. And then you can click into any of the receipts to see some more detail about that particular one. This order only has the one receipt that we just did, but there are some, and we'll take a look at those, that have multiple receipts and returns on them in all different types of statuses. The good thing is that because people now have the ability to delete those draft receipts, it makes it a little bit easier for them um, to not build up tons and tons of drafts since they can delete those. So we talked about um, full receiving and partial receiving, and then also, also about the methods. Um, and then I just showed you where you can go to see the different orders. So now let's talk about deleting draft receipts. So if we go into browse receipts, and I want to see one that is in draft status. Here is an example of a receipt that's, that is in draft status. If I wanted to discard the receipt or delete the receipt, it's called discard here, for whatever reason, maybe I accidentally created one and I need to discard it, um, or maybe it's something that, um, something that they're not ready re to receive yet because they haven't received the invoice for it. All they would need to do is click on discard draft and then they have the ability to enter a reason why they're discarding it. And if they need invoice from vendor, supplier. And then they would just click confirm. This is a required field, so they can't leave this blank. And once they click confirm, you can see that the status has changed changes, change to deleted. And then if we go back to the order and we take a look at the receipts tab, you can see that um, here is the receipt that was in draft status that we deleted. So it is still showing up in their list of receipts. It's just not something that, um, it's just not something that's going to affect that total. So CGI is working on the ability for them to default to filtering this out so that they don't have to worry um, about even seeing them. So that's something that's coming, but at least for right now, they do have the ability to delete the um, draft receipts. I will go ahead and close that. And then let's also talk about um, partial receiving with regards to an order that has multiple line items. So we get some folks that say, I want to do a partial receiving, but the system defaults to wanting to re receive in full. And I don't need to receive in full and I have 30 line items and I don't want to go into le each line item and zero them out. What can I do? So let's take a look at what you can do there. I'm going to pick one that hopefully has multiple line items. That one only has one. Let's go to another one. That is in canceled status, Sarah. I'm also going to limit it to only those that are ordered.
Sorry, guys. Just give me a second to find one with some multiple line items for us. Darn, I am I am striking out today. I was able to easily find it in the first session, but let's see what Wayne Enterprises has. Gosh darn it. Well, that's okay. I'm still going to be able to show this to you. So if I click Create Receipt, just like we went through, and then click Save to open the line items, if there are any line items that the end user is not going to receive on, rather than having them go into each of those line items and zero it out, so what I mean by that is going in here and changing it to zero, all they would need to do is click this little um, trash can next to the line item that they're not planning to receive on. And the system will ask them, are you sure you want to delete this row? And then it will remove it from the receipt so that they're not, um, there's, there's not a receipt with a whole bunch of line items zeroed out. And then that way they can just select the ones that they need to receive on and then delete the rest. And they can even select them all and then unselect the ones that they are planning to receive on. Right? Yeah, I like that. I like that addition too, because that was not, um, not always something that was there. I don't love that it defaults to receive or to fully receiving, but at least they have the ability to delete line items where they're not going to create a receipt on them at the moment. Okay, so we talked about all that. And then the last thing I wanna talk about before we um, move on to returns is final delivery. So, when an order, and this unfortunately does not do it in the UAT environment, but when something has been fully received, like this order, there normally is a little icon here that says that something has been, um, has final delivery is what they're calling it. So I'm actually going to go into production so I can show you all what this looks like. Not sure why it's not showing in UAT, but that's okay because I know where these are located in production. I'm not changing anything. So anything that is fully received in the production environment, let's go ahead and I'll collapse that so I can see this a little better. Anything that has been fully received like this order here, instead of this little truck icon, you will see this final delivery the words final delivery, meaning that it has been fully received and sometimes it might have even been over received. Sometimes also for whatever reason, I think what happens is somebody fully receives on something and then does a return and then that box is staying checked and I'll show you where that box is located. And then they go back in to make a return and for some reason they're not able to, even though there's still an amount or a quantity left on that particular order to receive. So if that happens, all you need to do is go to the order with the end user, and I will show you where the box is located, even though it won't be checked here. They would go to the purchase order, and then they would scroll down, and I promise I won't be changing anything. In fact, you know what? I'm going to hop back over to UAT just so I can be sure I'm not changing anything. So all they would have to do is click on the order number. Scroll down to the line items. Here's the, here's the one with two line items I was looking for. And then they can click on the little pencil icon. Most everything is grayed out, but under internal additional details, if they scroll all the way to the right almost, they'll see this final delivery box. And sometimes it might be checked even though that order has not been fully received. So the end user will need to uncheck that box and then click save, save and close, and then it will allow them to do additional receiving on that particular order. So I did want to um, go over that as well. We talked about all that good stuff. I'm just making sure we went over everything. Okay, last thing to talk about is canceling an order that already has receipts attached to it. So. Obviously, we don't want end users to be able to cancel an order that has already been received, whether partial or um, fully. 
So something I tested during our first session today, and I'm pretty sure that in production, when they click cancel PO on an order that has a receipt or receipt attached to it, it won't let them do it. So I think in production, it actually throws a, um, a blocking error saying you can't delete this or cancel this PO because you have some receipts attached to it. And for whatever reason, it's not doing it in UAT. So I already have that written down to confirm that when that happens in production, that they the end user will get a, a blocking error that says, nope, you can't do this. But at least in UAT, it doesn't let them do it either. So if they need to cancel an order for whatever reason, they're going to need to basically back out that receiving, which is done by returns, which we'll talk about in a second, because they can't cancel an order that they've already partially or fully received, because that means they have some type of product or service that they are saying, um, at least from an electronic standpoint in EVA, that they've received. So I did want to mention that as well, because some folks have said, hey, I'm trying to cancel an order and I can't do it. Well, it's probably because they have um, approved receipts that are already attached to that order or um, potentially returns, but it's, it's receipts because they're showing they've received something on the order. So you don't want to cancel an order you already have part of or all of. Okay, that is everything from the receiving demo. Does anybody have any questions before we start talking about returns? Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing this and go back into my slide deck. And now we're gonna talk about returns. So there are two reasons why an end user would need to return an item in EVA. The first one is that they need to return the item to the supplier and the item is no longer needed, in which case they would then go back in and do a change order so that the quantity or amount that they've received if, um, matches the quantity or amount they um, ordered. The other reason, and this is 80% of the time you're going to see the end users need to do returns, and that's to correct a previous receipt. So you all probably remember in the legacy platform, there was no real concept of returns. The way that we did returns in the previous platform or backing out receiving as we used to refer to it as was to put a negative number in when we were creating a receipt. But now that we have a platform that identifies the difference between receipts and returns, we are um, we don't need to worry about putting a negative number in there anymore. We just create a return as opposed to a receipt. So a lot of the times you'll see somebody that has done a receipt that's incorrect and they need to back that out and that's when they would create a return. So returns start from the receipt in the new platform. The way that I remember that is if you do your grocery shopping for the week and you get back home and you see that your flour that you purchased has a hole in the bag and you need to return it, the only way the store will let you return that is if you have a receipt. So that's how I help the end users remember it as well. Um, and in the beginning, how I remembered it is that you need to go to that receipt to create that return because you can't return something unless you've received something. So just like the line items on the receipt, the return line items are not numbered. And if there are multiple lines, they may appear out of order. Again, this is something that CGI is working to fix, but in the meantime, I would use the same um, uh, recommendation, that's what I'm looking for, to the end user that we do with the receiving, which is um, to have the PO up on one screen and then have their receipt up on the other if they have two, and compare the descriptions of the items to make sure that they're returning the proper line item. Also, in order to submit a return, there are actually three button clicks or three steps that the end user needs to go through in order to complete that return workflow. So with the receipt, all they had to do was click submit. But with the return, they need to click on schedule return button, confirm shipping button, and confirm receipt button. The thinking behind this is that iValue really was designed for the end user and the supplier to talk to each other um, automatically through the platform. It's not something that we're using with regards to receipts. 
um, and returned. So these button clicks represent things that might take place outside the platform or might not if they're just correcting something. So the logic behind these three steps was scheduling the return was the end user scheduling that return and saying, I'm going to return these items. The confirmed shipping was them the end user saying, I have shipped the items back or somehow gotten it back to the supplier. And then the confirm receipt button was something that the supplier would go in and click saying that, yes, they've con they've confirmed that they've received the returned items. So that's the logic behind those three button clicks. Um, don't worry too much about that. I tell the end users, don't think of it as having separate steps for everything. It's just that there are three button clicks to um, finish a return as opposed to one button click on the receipt since we're not really using it um, in the way that it may have been designed. So you don't have to go into all that detail with them, but I wanted to go into it with you because you all understand this on um, a much more detailed level. And I, I like to at least give you what the logic was behind having these three button clicks and what I value what was thinking when they were doing that. Also, the system does allow you to create multiple draft re returns, just like it does with the receipts. But just like with the receipts, you do have the ability to delete those returns as well. And we'll take a look at that um, in just a moment when we do our returns demo. Okay, any questions about returns before we hop into the returns demo? Okay, stop sharing this. And I'm going to start sharing UAT again. So we will go um, to procurement and browse orders because most of the time your end user isn't going to know what that receipt number is that they need to return. So they're going to need to go to the order first to find the receipt that they need to create a return from. So I am going to limit this to me because I don't want to mess up anyone's testing. I want to be respectful of their tests and not mess them up. I wouldn't like that if someone did that to me. So we'll go in here and let's pick something that has already been um, received. Sure, let's do this one. So they navigate to the order and then they would go to the receipts tab in that left navigation. And here um, are two receipts that are attached to this order. So the first one is one in deleted status. And this is the receipt that we want to create the return from. And we're gonna say that we're doing this because we need to correct the receiving. It's not something, um, I put the wrong quantity in there when I was receiving. So now you're on the receipt and you have the ability to create the return. And once you click on that create return button, it looks very similar to your single receipt screen. And just like with that other screen, you do need to click save in order for those other options to show up. Just like the system defaults to wanting you to fully receive, the system also defaults to wanting to thinking that you want to do a full return of the previous receipt you've done. So this is the previous receiving amount that we did because we created it from the receipt. So it thinks we want to return everything. You don't have to. So they are still able to click on that and change the quantity here. So we'll change it to four. And then here you can see that this has been grayed out already because we've already created a receipt and chosen the method. So we, we talked about that a little bit during um, the beginning of today's session. So that's where you can see, okay, the receipt's already been created, obviously, because we're creating a return, but there it lets you see that you are locked into receiving that way. We will save and save and close. They also do have the ability to add comments and attachments here, just like they did on the receipt. And then they can click on schedule returns. Remember, this is three button clicks. Schedule return, confirm shipping, and then finally confirming the receipt. Again, steps that might may or may not take place outside the platform. Um, best to just let the end user know that there are three button clicks as opposed to one um, for a return as opposed to a receipt. I also wanna show you here um, the approval status of the return, which is also the same on the receipt, just to show you that 
if you remember, I was talking about whoever launches the workflow needs to finish the workflow on a return or a receipt. So if somebody calls and says, hey, I can't submit this receipt or return and I don't know why, always best to go to the workflow or excuse me, the approval status on the return or the receipt to see who launched that workflow because it needs to be them that finishes it. And if for some reason they don't want that person to finish it or, or um, they prefer to do it themselves, they would just go in and discard or delete that receipt or return. I wanted to add that in there as well. So there you can see that my return has been created. And like I said, um, you do not put in a negative number. It automatically calculates that as a negative number because it does have that separate concept of receipts versus returns. Okay, let's go back to the purchase order. We'll go back into a different order and talk about deleting a, um, deleting a draft return. So I am gonna limit this to returns in draft status. So um, here's a return in draft status. So let's say that I don't need this anymore and I want to discard it is what we call it on the receipt, but it's actually called canceling on the return something that CGI is also working on because we want it to be consistent across both transactions. So for now, it's cancel. So all they would have to do if they want to delete a um, draft return, because remember you can't delete or make any type of changes to something that's already been submitted, you will click cancel, and then it changes the status to deleted. So unlike the receiving part, when you're canceling a draft receipt or deleting a draft receipt, you have to enter a reason. For right now, they don't have to do that when they're doing a return. So it's a little bit different, but again, um, CGI is working on making sure that it's consistent about, across both of those transactions. So for right now, just know that it's gonna look a little different depending on what the end user wants to do. Okay. Let me make sure that I went over all of that with you and let me hop back to my PowerPoint for a moment and make sure that I've showed you everything. Ah, yes, there is one other thing I wanted to talk to you all about. Also, sometimes there are receipts that are created because the end user can still create a receipt on some an order that has been fully received. Another thing that I think most likely they're going to be working on at CGI to improve this. But for right now, there are some that are, um, there are folks are still able to create a receipt from something that's been fully received. So don't need a draft for right now. So let's scroll down. Here's a perfect, let's see. You can pick them out because of this little icon here. We can choose this one, even though it's in deleted status, so I can show you. You'll get some end users sometimes that say there's no, um, they're getting this no item on their receipt. Basically what that means is that the um, order has already been fully received. So no line item is going to pop up on their seat. I know it's annoying because it's still letting you create the receipt, but um, easiest to tell the end user that all they need to do is look at this orders box. Then here they can see that it's been fully received and that's why no item is showing up. This one's already been deleted, which is exactly what you would tell the end user to do so that they don't have to um, leave it up in draft status and wonder what it is. Um, but just know if they have that no item, that's what that's referring to. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And let's go into my PowerPoint again. And let's start our interactive real issues review with 13 minutes left. I'm sure you guys will um, 
will do very well. And then at the end, I'll show you those, um, what someone can do if they need to change the receiving method. As I said, it's complicated, but I know you all can handle it. And if you have somebody that really wants to change it and can't continue with the method they've chosen, always reach out to me, I'm happy to help. So the first question is, oh no, I just realized I accidentally over-received on a PO and now I'm unable to make changes. Can you help? So what would you tell the end user to do in this case when they have made a mistake in receiving, they've submitted the receipts, they can't make changes to the receipt, how are they going to correct that receipt? Anybody? It's a different transaction. So they would create a return from the receipt that they um, over received on. They're able to create a return from there and then it backs out that receiving and they can start over at zero and re receive um, with the correct amount. Where do I go to locate the receipts that are related to a purchase order? Where could an end user go to see the receipts that are, that have already been created for a purchase order? I think I did catch that part. <laughs> I know, it's a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I was late. But Not I think when I, um, I think you mentioned going into the purchase order itself and then on the left-hand side where the menu is, there's an option down there that says receipt. Like you, a little truck or something? You, beautiful. Could not have said it any better myself. Like that is, ex I, I'm impressed in you. You got a good memory. You even oh, if you only knew where my mind was this afternoon. I feel so <laughs> guilty because I had so many problems and that's why I was so late to this meeting. But thank you. <laughs> I'm recording it. Don't worry about it. But yes, you even got the truck icon. That's exactly where you would instruct them to go. How do I receive a portion of an order? Because I haven't, um, I'm going to add a word in there, physically received all of the items. So I'm going to, we have a similar question later on. So I'm going to also add some description to this and say that this person only had one line item and they only want to receive part of that line item. And since the system defaults to fully receiving, how would they change the quantity on that line item to receive? Oh, you have to click on the trash can? Is it? They would actually click on what's next to the trash can, which is the yeah. pencil, yeah, and so. that allows them to change it. I'm trying to create a receipt, but the status on the PO is final delivery. Nothing's been received on the PO, and there are no um, present receipts under the receipts tab that we just talked about. So um, where should they go? Um, in order to see if the final delivery box is checked. Where is that box located? I know that this has been a lot of information, so if you don't know, it's totally fine. The final delivery box is on the line item of the purchase order under internal additional details. And you have to scroll all the way to the right. I'm trying to receive by dollar amount, but the system won't let me. What am I doing wrong? And I'll add to this that the person has already processed a receipt against the order. Is it because of how they set their um, their, their requisition up uh, to begin with? Exactly, exactly. So they not necessarily set the re requisition up, but when they made that first receipt, they selected, um, I shouldn't say selected, it defaults to quantity and they didn't change that. So because they didn't change that, they can't now receive by dollar amount as opposed to quantity. Right. I knew exactly where you were going, Tyrell. Like, I feel like there's a lot of R words in procurement. Re receiving, Wrong. requisition, <laughs> like return. It's like, I get them all confused sometimes. So if they did order by quantity though, I think what I did hear you say is they actually could 
do the receiving by, they could change that field. Had they done no receiving at all, they could go in and change that to amount. Mm-hmm. They can change okay. it to USD. Absolutely. Okay. And this might, this might be a good time just to talk about what they would need to do if they were like, listen, I have to change the amount or the, the method to amount um, from quantity. How do I do that? There's actually two ways they can do it. Both are involved. Um, one is less involved. So um, basically, if you think of an order being attached to a receipt, once they've clicked or once they've already received on that line item, they can't change it. So what they could do is go in and create a change order, copy the line item, and then delete the previous line item that they've already received on. I think that's really complicated, and I have never told someone to do that. What I have told some folks to do is that they can cancel the order if no, um, once they've backed out the receiving, and then they can create a new order so that they can select the proper receiving method. Neither is something that the end user is happy with, um, but it is something that CGI is working on to fix that you, um, if you backed out all the receiving, you would be able to change the method of receiving. But for right now, my recommendation, if someone says, listen, I, I can't continue to receive by the method I selected, you would go in um, and recommend that they cancel the order and then create a, a new order. Um, and they can do that by copying the requisition, um, a previous requisition, and then they can receive on it. It's involved, I know. So if you run into one of those, feel free to contact me and I can help you um, take the end user through that. No line item comes up for me to receive. What should I do? And maybe it, what should I do isn't the best question for this. Maybe it's um, I'm getting no line item when I go to receive. What does that mean? So I created a receipt and it's saying no line item. And I know that's a lot of information, so I will. So that's I'll, the one where it's because it's, it may be fully received. And mm -hmm. if you look at it on the right-hand side, it will show like ordered and then. Kenia, you even knew where it was on the right-hand side of the receipt. So yes, absolutely. I am super impressed. Um, yes, that's exactly where you would go on the right-hand side of that receipt to see if it's been fully received. And that's most likely what's happening. And then they can delete that draft receipt. Currently, we have three draft receipts for the PO sitting in draft status, and we can't get them off um, our dashboard. I'll change this to I can't get them off the receipts tab. Is there a way to correct this? So this question came in a lot before we had the ability to delete draft receipts, but let's say this person doesn't know that you have that ability now. Um, what would you tell them um, to get rid of those draft receipts? So they now have the ability to delete them, which is great. Uh, it's still going to show up in the list, unfortunately, but it shows up as deleted. So they don't get confused with um, which ones are in draft status um, and, you know, which ones can I delete and which ones I can't because um, they didn't even have the ability to delete them before. So for right now, you would um, instruct them to delete those draft receipts and let them know that it still will show up in their receipt list for the PO but that it will show up as a deleted receipt so they know which ones they've deleted. I only need to receive on one line item, but the PO has 50 line items. Do I have to go into each line item and change the quantity received to zero? So no, they don't have to. Um, we kind of talked about this briefly, so do not worry if you forgot. But they, um, I think it was Joanne that mentioned the um, trash can icon. This is where they would use that. So they would delete any line items that they are not receiving on, on the receipt, so that they're only seeing the lines that they actually need to receive on and not all 50, because they've only received maybe 10 of them. I had somebody contact me about this and he said, I don't want to go into each of these and zero them out. How do I do it? Um, and he was able, I believe, if I'm remembering the right person, able to go in and delete those line items. 
do approve receipts on an order prevent me from canceling it? If so, what should I do? So if an end user has some approved receipts on an order, can they cancel the order? So no, they can't. Um, and the way I think about this is um, if I have an Amazon order and I have received the order and then I tell Amazon I want to cancel it and I want my money back, they're going to say, we can't do that unless you return those items. So in order for them, um, them being the end user to cancel an order, they would need to create a return to back out that receiving so that it's at zero. And then they do have the ability to cancel the order. And that's um, the, uh, the outstanding question I have to follow up with about um, whether that throws a blocking error in the production platform, which I'm pretty sure it does. So final question, I know you all are excited about that. I submitted a receipt, but now I need to add the invoice to the receipt. How can I go about doing this? Any questions, any answers? It's okay if not, I will help. So you can't make any changes to a receipt or a return once they have been um, submitted and in approved status. And that includes adding attachments or comments. But if they really needed it to apply to that specific receipt or that receiving amount or quantity, they can always do a return to back out that receipt and then re-receive and attach the invoice. It's something um, that is a maybe a tiny bit of a pain point for some of our end users. And I believe it might be something that CGI is working on to as an enhancement um, in the platform. That was a lot, um, Sarah. Can you repeat that again for me, if you don't mind, please? Sure, sure. Let me go back. No, go back. OK. So if somebody has already submitted a receipt against an order and it's already been um, submitted and it's showing up in their list of receipts and they want to add an invoice to that receipt, similar to what they be, used to be able to do in the legacy platform, they're not able to do that because you can't make any changes to a return or a receipt that's an approved status. So what I would recommend that they do is create a return from that receipt where they need to attach um, the invoice and then do another receipt and attach the invoice to that new receipt. Um, otherwise, they can always um, just keep it in their records outside of Eva, but it is something that people are used to be able used to be able to do in the legacy platform. So if they definitely want to make sure they do that in the new platform, they're going to need to create a new receipt and they're going to need to return that previous one before they can do a new one. Did that help? Yes, it did. Thank you. Awesome. You are so <laughs> welcome. That is the end. I know I'm running over a minute. And Gania, um, I wanted to also say I started the beginning with letting them all know that I know I still owe everyone the re recordings from Tuesday. Dave is working on that. Um, I need to give him a call after this to um, figure out where we are. I think he also had some other things on his plate. Um, so I will send out those. Um, I do have the answers to the outstanding questions from Tuesday, but I wanted to wait till I have the recordings to send those out. So I'll talk to Dave after this and see how fast he can get the links up for YouTube. And then I'll send everything out together in one. So everybody will have that. And any okay, other- Okay, great. That's yep. awesome. Thank you so much. You're Thank so you. welcome. And are there any other questions that anyone else had? I'm happy to go over something again. I know we're over, but that that's fine with me if it's fine with you. But I do know you all have um, your responsibilities to get back to. Awesome. Okay, so I also wanted to just end with saying thank you all for letting me take um, three total hours of your precious time to talk to you about P2P and take you through the P2P process. And I also wanted to congratulate all of you because I know that I think it was last month 
Um, you received recognition from um, the governor's office because someone you all helped had a direct line to the governor's office. And I was so happy to hear that you guys got recognition about that because you do not get enough recognition as our first line of support for the EVA team. And even though um, I'm not on the EVA team anymore, I do want to tell you how much I appreciate it. And I'm going to leave a little something on all of your desks tonight. So you'll have them when you come in in the morning, just as a small token of my appreciation for all that you have done. And even though, as I said, I'm not on the EVA team, I am still so honored to be um, one of your colleagues. And you um, have such a great example from Tyrell and Gania. So thank you, thank you, thank you all. It is seriously an honor to um, to work with you and call you one of my colleagues. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah. We really appreciate it. Um, I'll probably touch base with you on how we want to handle the transfer of everything. Um, awesome. Um, probably touch base with you tomorrow and then talk okay. to the leads and figure that out. Um, but thank you so much for doing this. Really so appreciate welcome. it. Uh, and I guess we'll look forward to the recordings. Did you guys have anything else? All right now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Have, Have a, great a great evening. Day. Do the same now. Bye. Bye bye.